And as I share with you a few announcements, if you would pass that friendship book that's on the inside of each of these aisles that way, we'd appreciate it. Let me tell you that there's no one in the hospital, which is very good news. And that right after the service today, uh, we're going to be having uh, a uh, commitment ceremony for Leona and Henry Mann. Uh, the, the family has held on to their ashes until this time. Uh, we were going to be outside today, but for some reason we're not going to be. And you may have noticed the reason out there with all that rain. So we will be having the service right here after our 11 o'clock worship. Our minute, a moment for ministry today is Forgotten Louisville and a ministry to the homeless. And I think Jonathan, Jonathan Sutton is going to do that for us today. Jonathan's back there. And next Sunday there will be only one service at 11 a.m. And next Saturday, April 21st, from 1 until 3, our mission and outreach program will be at Strathmore Presbyterian assembling hygiene kits to help the Presbyterian Disaster Assistance Program. Any help would be greatly appreciated. And on May 8th, the Presbyterian women will be hosting their annual birthday luncheon. All interested women are, of the church are welcome. Please see Linda LaFrance out front uh, to sign up for that luncheon. Also tell you that next Sunday night, April 22nd, there's going to be a going away party. <laughs> they left it out of the announcements. So I guess they're still doing it. I'm thinking, okay. Let us stand and greet one another at this time. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we come into your presence with thanksgiving 
We give you thanks for the message of the resurrection. We ask that we might feel your power this day as we sit here in this place to worship you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand if you can do so comfortably and join me in the call to worship. The Lord is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Beloved, we are God's children now. Let us worship God.
have heard what was written about Jesus in Scripture, how he would suffer and die, and then rise from the dead on the third day, how through his death and resurrection the forgiveness of sin is now possible for all who repent and have a change of heart. So let us boldly approach the throne of God where we will find grace and mercy as we pray the prayer of confession. God of all hope and joy, we confess that we continue to live in fear. We send the Lord of life among us, yet we gave him up to die. We raised him from the dead, yet we still do not believe. Forgive us, God of grace. Help us to receive with gratitude the great gift of love you offer, and live as your beloved children. Jesus is gentle with our doubts. The Spirit offers us peace in the midst of our lacking of understanding. The one who created us leads us step by step into deeper trust. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, give us humble, teachable, and obedient hearts that we may receive what you have revealed and do what you have commanded. Amen. Our reading today is from Acts chapter 3, verses 12 through 19. When Peter saw it, he addressed the people, You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you stare at us as though by our own power or piety we had made him walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate, though he had decided to release him. But you rejected the holy and righteous one and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses, and by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect health in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, I know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. The word of the Lord. Justice to nations. Re- 
remembered a merciful love loyal to the house of Israel. The ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Praise the Lord. the Lord you earth, break into song, into praise, sing praise to God with a harp, with a harp and sound of music, with the sound of trumpet and horn, shout to the Lord our King. Our time for the children. <laughs> come close, come close, come close, come close. I want to see you guys. Okay. All right. So I like to see your faces. If y'all can look at me in any way, that'd be so great. I'd like to see faces. Okay.
So I was wondering if anyone here had gotten hurt enough that they might have a scar somewhere. Some of you are a little young, but maybe does anyone, and just point to it. Don't tell me about it because I don't have time for scar stories. But tell me, does, or point to your scar. Does anybody have a scar? No one has a scar? You have, oh, okay. Oh my goodness, so there's some that we can't see, but some you can show me. So I was thinking about a scar, I, okay, I love scar stories, and sometimes when I'm with groups, we'll share a star, scar story so I can figure out what's going on with them, because everybody has a story. So after worship, if you find me, you can tell me your scar story, but I'm going to tell you mine. So I have one, it's right inside my lip. When I was playing softball and I was warming up, I looked away and as they threw the ball, they called my name right in the mouth did I get a ball. So I had stitches. Yeah, it was terrible. But I was thinking about this today because, um, so when, okay, so when you find me after worship because I want to hear these stories. So <laughs> a few weeks ago, we're still in Easter season, so we're still talking about the resurrection. And it was the women who went to the tomb and found it empty and then later, Jesus appeared to Mary and some of the other disciples. And sometimes, Jesus had to show the scars on his hands and his feet for them to know who he was. So, I usually recognize people by their faces, but at this time, they were, he was showing his scars, his hands and his feet. And those scars represent the story of God's love. And so, I think about our hands and feet how we can use them. So God calls us, and sometimes our hands tell stories. I bet when you were dying Easter eggs, your fingers turn colors, right? Or sometimes when you color with markers. So that tells a story of what you were doing with your hands. And sometimes when we get new shoes or we walk a really long time, we might get a blister on our feet. That tells a story of what we were doing, right? So that's how the scars on Jesus' hands and feet tells the story of God's love. God loved us so much that he sent Jesus to die. And so that's what those scars are from. And so for us to show others about God's love, we can use our hands and our feet. We can go. Sometimes we're places, places that make us uncomfortable. And we can do and help others. And sometimes it's not very comfortable. If you're staying in worship, you'll hear about um, the Forgotten Louisville, and that's the youth go once a month to serve, to give things, to help the homeless, to talk to the homeless and hear their stories. And sometimes it's not comfortable, but it's something that God calls us to do. Use our hands and our feet to show God's love. So it's good to see you all. I look forward to these stories later, okay? All right, can we say a prayer together? Our hands together. Dear God, thank you for your love and for your son, Jesus. Help us to share your love by using our hands and feet. Amen. Our gospel reading today is taken from the 24th chapter of Luke's gospel, reading from verse 36 through verse 48. Listen for God's word to you. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet and see that, is I, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, 
for a ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, have you, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, These are my words that I have spoken while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written, that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And all God's people said, The other day I ran into a friend of mine and uh, the first thing he wanted to tell me about was Andre Ingram. Andre Ingram. Does anybody know who Andre Ingram is? Uh, well, I certainly didn't. I don't even watch professional basketball, but Andre Ingram was a rookie for the Lakers and he scored 19 points in his first game. No big deal except for one thing. Andre Ingram had been in the minor leagues of the NBA for 10 years before this happened. And out of nowhere, he comes and scores these 19 points. Suddenly, it becomes a big story because it's simply not supposed to happen. People go to those minor leagues and are never heard from again. They go there and they just slowly get worse and worse until then they fade away. And that's the way it is. Things in our world we think of and we say, I could see that coming. We could see it coming because we know how things are supposed to be. We know that the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. We know that the homeless stay homeless. We know that women get paid less than men. We know that the world is the way it is. And your kid comes home from school and he's telling you some story about this thing happened to him on the ball team and Timmy did this and Timmy did that. And it's just not fair, Dad. It's just not fair. Or Mom. And what do you say to your child? Honey, the world's not fair. You ever said that? To yes. Because it's true. The world is not fair. And what that means is things keep going the way they're going. The assets are frozen, so to speak. And along come these Christians and these Jews, and they say, that's not the way it has to be. Along comes this resurrection thing, and it changes everything. It turns everything upside down. Suddenly, what's impossible becomes possible. In this story we heard in Acts today. What precedes Peter's sermon, he and John are going to the temple to worship. And when they get there, they run into this lame man on the steps of the temple. And they find him there. And he asked them for money. Because that was the only way he could survive. He could not take care of himself he could not work he could not earn a living so he had to count on handouts in order to live he asked for money and they say to them they cannot give him money but they can give him something else and what they do in the name of Christ they heal him the man stands up he not only walks he leaps for joy and the people in the temple see this and they're amazed but they're also annoyed. You know why they're annoyed? Because when things aren't the way they always are, it bothers us. We don't like change. We just don't like for anything to change. Crippled people should like to stay crippled. I mean, because after all, if, if some carpenter can be raised from the dead, all bets are off. All of a sudden, things become possible that aren't possible. 
Last night, we were invited to the 50th wedding anniversary celebration for Dale, Dale Redford, and we get in there, and all these people are gathered, and Dale and Janet are sitting there at the head table. The room is packed full of people, and in the middle of this crowd sits Graham, who's four years old, and you know how those things go. We sit there, and my wife will tell you if you ask her, you know, I get real squirmy at those things because you sit there and you're waiting. And Dale said, well, they'll be bringing out your salads in a minute. But they didn't. I mean, people at my table started taking the crackers and eating the sour cream. I, I, I said, I really think that's for the potatoes, but go ahead, I know. And we're waiting. And here's Graham. He's four. And he's saying, oh. and Graham can see over in the corner that there's a chocolate cake. <laughs> and he's got his eye on that chocolate cake and his mother says to him, Graham, if you can just sit still long enough for this party to get over, you're going to get a piece of chocolate cake. Well, I could look back there and see that it was killing Graham, but he was hanging on for dear life he knew there was chocolate cake at the end of this journey, and he was hanging in there. Janie found the same incentive did not work for me, but she tried. <laughs> but everyone is having a great time. And then we're being welcomed, and the children are welcoming all of the friends that are there. And Leslie, daughter Leslie, says, you know, in October, we didn't think we'd be here today. Now, you know what happened in October. In October, Dale had surgery, and he nearly died on the operating table. In October, the nurse came out of surgery and said, he's not, it doesn't look like he may make it. I need to prepare you. And here we sat, praying for a miracle. Because we knew that unfortunately we live in a world where bad things do happen. And it feels like sometimes life is so unfair. But last night, we celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary and his 80th birthday. The world has to deal with a new fact, and that is that God's power for life is greater than even death. And that doesn't mean that in every situation it's going to turn out that way. But what it does mean is that we pray knowing it might turn out that way. We pray because we know that in Jesus Christ God has said, I give you victory over even death. Now, we see that in the strangest kinds of ways. I was uh, <laughs> on an airline flight some years ago, and I'm sitting on the plane, and this woman walks in into the plane, and she takes her seat, and she gets out her Kindle, and she gets all settled in, and this man comes on the plane, and he's walking along, and he's kind of dragging one leg a little bit, and he's got an ear that looks like maybe a dog tried to bite it off, and he's got a bandage on it. And as he walks past me, I could tell there's a little odor of cigarettes and perspiration. And he sits down next to the woman. And they close the cabin. And there's some vacant seats up there. Now, you could see this coming, right? She got up, she moved as far away from him as she could. 
Same flight, I'm coming home. A woman is sitting across from me. Same scenario. Onto the plane comes this man. He's got on a camo shirt. He's got on a leather hat. She's getting ready to sit down in her seat, and he screams to her, Ma'am, ma'am, if you wait a minute, I'm in that window seat. I won't make you have to get up. Well, you know what she did. She totally ignored him. She just sat down in her seat. He comes up there, and sure enough, she had to get up for him to move in there. And then he introduces himself. Turns out he's the turtle man. Now I know he's all your favorite character. The turtle man, it seems, I didn't know who the turtle man was, but the turtle man, it seems, had, at that point had the highest rated cable show on TV. And he said, ma'am, I catch critters. I've got the highest rated program on cable TV. Now we knew everything. I knew everything about the man because he told us all. Everybody in the plane got announced this. He said, this fella behind me here, he's with me. He was also dressed in camo, only had on shorts and a belt strapped under his rather rotund belly. And he said, he said, this fella right here is one of the best banjo pickers I ever heard in my life. He said, he's getting ready to, he said, we've been up in New York. He is going to uh, be on an album with the best banjo picker in the country. And the guy whispers something in the turtle man's ear. And the turtle man says, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know I wasn't supposed to tell that. <laughs> By the time they got off the plane, they were best friends. She asked her husband to give her a business card. Give, he <laughs> asked her husband to give him one of her business cards. And she gave it to the turtle man. They walked off the plane laughing and talking. And I thought. Who could have seen that coming? And I wondered, you know, the first lady that moved all the way up to the front of the plane because she didn't want to be there, that man sitting in the seat, I wonder what she missed by not staying there. I wonder what she missed by being sure that she knew what was coming rather than seeing what God might be bringing. Because we're living this side of Easter now, and all things are possible. And at the end of the party, Graham didn't just get one piece of chocolate cake. He got two. And if I could describe the grin that was on his face, it would make you all envious. If we can keep our eye on the promise that God brings to us in Jesus, if we can keep our eye on that, then we might just open ourselves to the gifts that God wants to give us. Not one piece of chocolate cake, but two. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your promises. We thank you that today we're going to elect officers to help lead this, your church. We pray that they will keep their eye on you and be led by you so that indeed they may show in the way that they live their lives, they may help reveal your resurrection. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
let me ask if the newly elected officers would come down at this time. Join me now in the litany that's found in your bulletin. There are varieties of gifts, but it is the same Spirit who gives them. God works through each person in a unique way, but it is God's purpose that is accomplished. Within the community of faith, some are called to particular service as elders and deacons. Representing the one holy Catholic and apostolic church, the session now ordains and installs those called to off the office of elder and deacon. Let us therefore reaffirm our baptismal vows, renouncing all that opposes God and God's rule, and affirming the faith of the Holy Catholic Church. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as your Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? Will you be Christ's faithful disciple, obeying his word and showing his love? As we prepare to affirm our faith, let us all stand. With the whole church, let us stand and confess our faith. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? We have reaffirmed our baptismal vows, renounced all that opposes God and God's rule, and affirmed the faith of the Holy Catholic Church. Yes. We welcome these new officers who are going to be ordained and installed. And on the back of your bulletin, you have the list. The asterisks on there are a little bit backwards, I think. So we have two who have been previously ordained as elders who are coming now to be uh, installed. Those are April Davenport and Eric Lehman. And three who are being ordained and installed. Dan Askins, Josh Barrick, and uh, Keegan Henderson. Where's Keegan? Okay, Keegan, okay, come over on this side. You're, you're an elder dude, so you're good. And then there are deacons. Um, Susan Anderson, Gail Hudson, and Sarah Sutfin have been previously ordained, coming to be installed. And Sarah Bumpus and Sandy Hinkle will be ordained and installed today as deacons. And so you can see. And we'll now ask the ordination question. 
Do you trust in Jesus Christ, your Savior, acknowledge him Lord of all and head of the church, and through him believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Do you? Do you accept the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments to be, by the Holy Spirit, the unique and authoritative witness to Jesus Christ in the church universal and God's word to you? Do you? Do you sincerely receive and adopt the essential tenets of the Reformed faith as expressed in the confessions of our church as authentic and reliable expositions of what scripture leads us to believe and do and will you be instructed and led by those confessions as you lead the people of God do you and will you will you fulfill your ministry in obedience to Jesus Christ under the authority of scripture and be continually guided by our confessions will you Will you be governed by our church's polity, and will you abide by its discipline? Will you be a friend among your colleagues in ministry, working with them, subject to the ordering of God's word and spirit? Will you? Will you in your own life seek to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, love your neighbors, and work for the reconciliation of the world? Will you? Do you promise to further the peace, unity, and purity of the church? Do you? Will you pray for and seek to serve the people with energy, intelligence, imagination, and love? Will you? And now this for the elders. Will you be a faithful elder watching over the people, providing for their worship, nurture, and service? Will you share in government and discipline serving in governing bodies of the church, and in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? And to the deacons, will you be a faithful deacon, teaching charity, urging concern, and directing the people's help to the friendless and those in need? And in your ministry, will you try to show the love and justice of Jesus Christ? Will you? At this time, we want to ask those who are able to kneel. Those who are being ordained. Being, being ordained. And then I would ask uh, the ordained ministers and elders to come forward for the laying on of hands first. Let, me, let us pray. Gracious and eternal God, with joy we give you all thanks and praise. In every time and place, you have chosen servants from among your people to point the way to salvation. We are grateful for ancestors in the faith who followed without fear, placing their trust in you alone. We thank you for men and women in every age who have nurtured your people in faith and faithfulness. Above all, we praise you for Jesus Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life to set others free. Anointed by your Holy Spirit, Jesus proclaimed your reign on earth, revealing your saving love in all that he said and did. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon your servant, whom you called through baptism as your own and marked as your own. Grant them the same mind that was in Christ Jesus. Give them a spirit of faithfulness that they may show the compassion of Christ in the actions of daily living and rightly govern your people. Give them the gifts of your Holy Spirit to build up the church, to strengthen the common life of your people, and to lead with compassion and vision. In the walk of faith and for the work of ministry, give to your servants gladness and strength, discipline and hope, humility and humor, courage, and an abiding sense of your presence. Amen. Have John, let's have him stand. Yeah, you may stand. <laughs> you are now elders and deacons in the church of Jesus Christ and for this congregation. Be faithful and true in your ministry so that with your whole life you may bear witness to the crucified and risen Christ. And then these questions to the congregation. 
Do we, the members of the church, accept these newly ordained and installed elders and deacons, chosen by God through the voice of this congregation to lead us in the way of Jesus Christ? We do. Do we agree to encourage them, to respect their decisions, and to follow as they guide us, serving Jesus Christ, who alone is head of the church? We do. Let us welcome you. Welcome. Oh, you made it. It's not as bad as being. Okay. But you know he didn't listen. Life and death, we belong to God. Let us come together in the prayer of the people. O Lord, Almighty God, we pray for the world and the governments and the leaders who govern. When we are blinded by anger, you pour out your love for all to see. When we wonder what tomorrow will bring, you call us to trust in you. When sadness fills our hearts, you plant gladness in our hearts. God of Easter, touch us with your grace. We pray for the poor, the broken hearts, the sick ones, and the homeless. You show us your hands so we may reach out to mend the broken. You show us your feet so we may walk with those the word passes by. You show us your face so we may know who our sisters and brothers look like, risen Christ. Touch us with your compassion. We pray for Harvey Brown Presbyterian Church and all the communities of faith, especially those who are ordained and installed as elders and deacons today. You open our eyes so we may see God's love you open our minds so we may welcome God's word. You open our lips so we may be God's witnesses. Spirit of hope, touch us with your peace. That we may focus solely on your resurrection power. God in community, holy in one, open us to your presence as we pray as Jesus has taught us saying our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the, and the glory forever. Amen. Now for the moment for ministry, uh, Scott Dorling and Jonathan Sutton will come forward and speak about 
the forgotten Louisville, a ministry for the homeless. Let us welcome Scott and Jonathan. We're going to start off with just a short reading from uh, the Gospel of Matthew. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? <clears throat> and when was it that we saw you sick, or in prison, and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it for me. Well, during the last year, the youth of Harvey Brown have really been blessed with an opportunity to minister to some of these very least of these who are members of God's family. <clears throat> with really amazing support from this congregation, we've been able to participate monthly with the Forgotten Louisville, which is a group dedicated to ministering to Louisville's homeless community. And rather than my trying to describe what it's all about, I'm just going to grab the Forgotten Louisville's mission statement. They say it far better than I can as far as the, the purpose of this ministry. They say the Forgotten Louisville is made up of many volunteers from various backgrounds, but we all have one thing in common, our love for people. The hurting, the addicted, the lost, the lonely, and homeless. We hit the streets every Wednesday night, taking food and supplies to feed, clothe, warm up, or cool down, depending on the season. More importantly, we are building relationships. And with that, I'll turn it over to Jonathan to do a little first person. On behalf of the youth and everyone else who has been involved with this mission, I just wanted to say thank you to those who have given their gifts of money and um, food and use uh, clothing items uh, that they've donated in order to further our mission with Forgotten Louisville. They've really made the difference um, in so many people's lives, um, and I just wanted to say thank you. Um, uh, and also to um, extend a uh, offering of those who want to offer their time as well. Um, we have a sign-up sheet out in the uh, foyer. Um, Terry Hargrave will be um, uh, ha um, uh, dealing with that. And um, if you, um, so every Wednesday uh, will be um, our opportunities for you to go out with Forgotten Louisville and. Um, do the same kind of stuff that we've been doing once a month on Wednesdays. Uh, there's a want list for different items uh, in the drop closet, and um, we post uh, notifications on Facebook about the different things that we've been doing. So again, on behalf of uh, the youth and everyone who's been involved, uh, we, just wanted to, we just wanted to say thank you for your support for the mission. Time to receive the offerings and tithe and our commitment to our God. Let us give.
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Lord God, we offer you only a portion of what you have given us. All that we have is from your All that we can give away, we do through Jesus' love. All our evil comes from the Holy Spirit Deal graciously with these gifts so that others may have joy. Welcome everyone here, especially those of you visiting with us. We're delighted to have you here. Welcome those new officers into the life of the church. We're glad to have their leadership. And now challenge you to go into the world living into that promise of the resurrection, knowing that by the power of God, all things are possible. All things are possible in God's name. And now... The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and forever. Amen. Amen. 